my crazy friend ended up becoming a murderer, so today has been a particularly slow day at work, and I've been killing time reading these stories. Maybe enough time has passed and I can share mine, I had this friend who was really into the occult. Unfortunately I was the one who got him turned on to it. We had a mutual appreciation of the paranormal and all things weird, so I thought the subject would interest him, he started going deep into the subject to the point where he wouldn't talk about anything else. He would actually interrupt a conversation and force the subject back to occult matters. Rude, but sometimes people go through phases where their interest is all they want to talk about. It was a mostly forgivable offense, I think I should mention that this particular friend didn't have a very large friend circle. His depression and introverted nature kept him inside a lot. He didn't have the best luck in relationships with women. His world was kind of small, and I did enjoy hanging out with him so I did my best to be a good friend. I didn't want to just brush him off because he was acting a little weirder than normal, honestly for the longest time he was a totally normal guy. We chat and play games together on the PlayStation. Sometimes we'd go see movies, with my boyfriend accompanying us. We all hung out at the park, we went swimming overall we had a good time hanging out, things started to go downhill when he started to smoke DMT. Personally I think psychedelics are amazing tools that can offer insight into your life. But they should be treated with respect. My friend got to the point where he was making it himself, apparently a pretty easy thing to do after a meager amount of research, and he was smoking it daily, multiple times a day. For those of you who aren't familiar with the substance, when you smoke it, you get transported to a different world. An entirely new plane of existence. Your body and yourself don't exist anymore. You're just exploring this alternate reality dreamscape. My personal experience with it led me to seeing a dragon once in this kaleidoscope of a cornucopia. People see all kinds of different things there, imagine what that does to a person when they're smoking it 30 plus times in a day, he started telling me things like he was the reincarnated Osiris. He said he was seeing Egyptian hieroglyphs all over the place in waking life. Apparently he had hour-long conversations with entities in his bedroom even when he wasn't smoking DMT, of course I was very alarmed to hear all of this and I told him he needed to take a serious break. No drugs at all for a few months so he can find solid footing in reality again, at this point I was still hanging out with him because he obviously needed some help, and like I said before he didn't have a lot of friends that could give him that. He was also the black sheep of the family, so I knew he wasn't getting any kind of support from them, he was really close to his sister, and I did reach out to her on Facebook to express my concerns. I pushed her to talk him into getting some psychiatric help, because he was slipping past the point of no return. I'm not really sure if she took my messages seriously since we didn't really know each other. Plus she is at least 6 years younger than us and possibly didn't grasp how serious the situation was becoming. In any case, I'll jump forward now to the part where things start to get really creepy, my boyfriend had made arrangements to hand out with our friend at the park. I didn't really want to go because I felt like I needed a break from him and his nonsensical ranting. I just couldn't deal with it on that particular day. My boyfriend said he wasn't all that bad and we went anyway. We get to the park and he is his usual self. Ranting about Egypt and made up gods that only he knew the truth about, etc. He also had this large hunting knife that he kept fiddling with the whole time we were on a walk, he told us that he had been using it in ceremonial magic, and that it helped to banish negative thoughts. It made me extremely uneasy, he would do this thing where he would take the knife and make stabbing motions near his heart or head. Like he was mock stabbing himself. All while holding a conversation with me or my boyfriend, I think we were both really on edge and didn't know how what to say or do about it. I tried to distract him from doing it by bringing up other subjects that might interest him, but he kept on with his ritual. Dot, keep in mind we were walking on a trail, so it wasn't like we could just say goodbye then and there. We had to walk back to our car and drop him off at his car, my boyfriend had the bright idea that we should get some lunch after our walk. Even though I was doing my best to give him a look that said, no you crazy fuck, why do you think I want to spend any more time with this nut, but it must not have been very effective, or my boyfriend was ignoring it. Not sure. Either way we ended up getting in the car to go get lunch, in the car I was driving, my boyfriend was in the passenger seat, and our weirdo friend was in the back. As we're heading through a busy part of town where all the shopping and restaurants are, I hear the distinctive sound of a belt buckle coming undone. Then I hear the worst sound imaginable. I peek back out of the corner of my eye and my suspicions were confirmed, this crazy fucker was full on jacking off in our back seat. I mean, pants all the way down, bare ass on the seat. 
beating it so hard it was like he wanted to rip it off. Instantly I felt sick to my stomach and all the nervous energy I had throughout the day popped up into my head. I was trying not to shake, and trying to ignore it and drive through heavy traffic, I kind of had a freeze response I guess. And the whole time I kept thinking about the hugest knife he had in his pocket, and obviously he was completely off his rocker now. I was afraid to say anything or confront him because I didn't know how he was going to react. This part is nuts, but my boyfriend didn't fucking seem to notice. And the whole time he kept rambling on about god knows what. I couldn't listen because my thoughts were 100% focused on driving and trying to act like I didn't know what was going on in my backseat. We get to the restaurant and my boyfriend runs inside to grab food. I'm left alone in the car with our friend, and I try to act like I'm browsing on my phone, when really I'm watching and listening as hard as I can. We don't talk, my boyfriend gets back and I complain that I'm tired, it's been a long day. Let's drop him off etc, so I drive us back to our friend's car, and he doesn't get out of our vehicle. He just sits there, I have to get a little bit rude and ask him to please get out and go home, he gets out of our car, and walks over to his passenger side. I start getting really scared and I suspected the worst. He pulled a gun out of some kind of bag he had on the seat, and he just walks over to our car with it. I don't know why the fuck I did this, but I was so pissed I just got out of my car and walked right up to him. I was maybe 3 feet away and could see it was a loaded 9mm, I kept asking him over and over what are you doing, because apparently that's all my brain could think to do. I told him to get in his car and go home. He never said anything during this whole time. Just kind of cried and had this wild look in his eye. For whatever reason he got back into his car and drove off, I told my boyfriend obviously we are never hanging out with him again and that I didn't even want him to talk to him anymore. No contact, nada, a few months pass and he occasionally messages me through the playstation or text my phone. He says a lot of random stuff and I just ignore it, it turns out he moved down to TN near Nashville, I don't know why. He had a roommate and I think their girlfriend lived there. I'm not really sure about the situation. I think maybe he's turning his life around and getting a fresh start down there. I think it's best to cut all contact and let him regroup. I'm not interested in any kind of friendship with him and I know he needed help beyond what I could offer, again, I reached out to his sister and let her know that he had a gun. She managed to get it from him somehow but it did little good in the end, I get a call around 11pm one night that wakes me up. It's a man claiming he's a detective down in Gallatin. TN and my heart skips a beat. I start sweating and immediately ask what happened, apparently my former friend stabbed someone to death on Halloween day, I don't know all the details, and the articles about it are kind of sparse. The whole thing is really surreal and I'm just left feeling like I'm lucky that I didn't get shot last summer, this whole thing turned out way longer than I meant it to be, but that's the story. I'm still feeling creeped out by the whole ordeal, and I'm kind of feeling sick after writing all of this. The time I was almost abducted by a serial killer, in February of 2012, I went to visit my grandfather's grave for his birthday. His death was a really hard thing for me to deal with, as he had died in March of 2011, and was still very fresh to me, I was kneeling in front of his grave with my head down, mooring and crying, when my body went into full dangerous close by mode, I looked up to see a man running full sprint from the woods surrounding the cemetery, and forced myself to get to New York truck as quickly as possible. Without the man getting too close to me, by the time I made it to my truck he had gotten about 50 feet from me. I jumped in and locked the door, much to his apparent displeasure. He threw his hands up in a huff like his favorite team had just lost a football game, I started the truck and started to drive out as fast as I could, but not before driving right past him. I didn't break eye contact for a second, and neither did he. So I got a really good look at his face, cut to a few years later. I'm at work bored and decided to download an app that had a ton of paranormal, cryptid, serial killer, and UFO articles. As I was browsing through the serial killers, I came across one that made my heart drop into my ass, Israel Keys, most known for murdering an underage girl in Alaska, dismembering her body, and dropping the pieces into a frozen lake, he would bury kill kits in places long before he ever committed the crimes, after the incident in Alaska, he had traveled into Texas, for a wedding in a city not too far from where I live and had disappeared for a bit and no one in his family knew where he was. He was arrested in that city, and brought to the prison one city over from me, before he was extradited back to Alaska to stand trial, about a year ago I found a book about him, that provided a lot of the details I have given here, he had been killing for years, and no one knows what the actual death toll is. He eventually killed himself in prison. I dated a murderer, 
I had gotten out of an 8 year abusive relationship and met someone on a popular online dating app. To be honest, I wasn't looking for anything serious, just someone to go watch a movie or have a drink with every now and then. I had two boys and was happy in living a peaceful life on my own after going through hell, so I meet this guy who was just a couple years older than me and he had turned his life around. When he was younger, he used to be in gangs and drugs and now he was into working out and staying really fit and doing family stuff. I guess you can say I felt protected by him. He was a hard worker, self-sufficient, had a son and he loved going to the gym every day. I myself had kind of a crazy past but overcame, so we seemed like a good fit, we would go to dinner, movies, normal dating stuff but he eventually wanted to spend more and more time together and I was having trouble giving up all my free time for him and he would get angry about this, like really angry. After being with a controlling, possessive asshole for so long. This was obviously a red flag and after 3 months, I told him I didn't want to see him anymore, he said he needed to confess something to me. He admitted to me that he was using steroids and that was the reason for his mood swings. He cried and said he was sure that was the reason and was willing to stop if it meant he could have another chance and I obliged but only under the condition that we remained friends, things were okay for a while, we saw each other maybe every other week and he started wanting to see me every week to which I told him that I was not interested in being anything other than friends at the moment since I was not ready for a relationship. He tried to talk me into giving him another chance but I just didn't find myself interested in him a romantic way and so I insisted that we just be friends. I stopped talking to him because I got mad at his insistence that we still talk every day since he said that's what friends do. He would always ask about my whereabouts and ask for pictures of who I was hanging out with and I told him that this is not what friends do and he just insisted that he just innocently wanted to see what I was up to, fast forward 6 months later and I hadn't spoken to him at all within that time. I was happy in living my life and on one particular night when my youngest son was at his dad's. I went out to a local bar with friends. My oldest son who was 13 at the time was home alone so I left a little early to make it home around 10 pm. I lay down in bed and go to sleep, so a little info on my living situation, I had been living in my condo for almost a year now and we lived in a great, safe community and I would leave my patio sliding glass door open, screen closed, to get a breeze in at night, no biggie. My bedroom was close to the patio and my son would sleep in the loft that was closest to the front door. I'm dead asleep when I suddenly feel someone slowly sit on my bed. I'm laying in bed wondering why my son would come sit on my bed so slowly. He wouldn't. I turn around and it's not him. It's Mario, not his real name, laying down in bed next to me. I sit up and ask him how he got in. He's not answering me. He says I needed to talk to you. I said okay, when you need to talk to someone you don't sneak into someone's room, you call them, you leave a note for them, literally anything but this. I'm thinking I'm gonna kill my kid for letting him in. He said I didn't have your number anymore, I needed to talk to you before it's too late. I didn't even entertain the before it's too late bit because I was livid, but something told me to keep my cool. I sit up and say look. I really want to talk to you too. But not like this. Please, just leave, and I promise we will talk tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. He stares at me while rubbing my neck and goes down to my shoulders and lets go. Says okay. This motherfucker proceeds to exit through my patio door and jumps my patio wall which tells me that is exactly how he got in. I freak the fuck out, check on my kid, he had no idea what was going on, locked all my doors and I don't sleep the rest of the night. The next day I text him and I tell him that if I ever see him near me or in my complex I will call the police and to never contact me again. If you're wondering why I didn't call the cops to begin with, I knew he had a gun so A, I was scared of being retaliated against for being a snitch and B, I figured if I called the cops they would probably not do much or just let him out and I was afraid of what he would do after the fact. Either way he left me alone and I didn't hear from him for years, 4 years later, I'm going through Facebook and I see his face and people you may know. I click on the picture and notice that it looks like a jail picture. You know, those pictures where the guy is clearly in a jail cell. I scroll down the page and his most recent post is him posting his address for his family members to write to. A prison address. So I google his name, and sure enough, articles after articles all with the same headline, man arrested on suspicion of killing girlfriend, about two years after him and I dated, he shot and killed the girl he was dating. That could have been me. And I feel like shit thinking if there was anything I could have done to stop him. Even scarier thought is that he only got 12 years for her murder. I was attacked by a murderer as a child in broad daylight, hey, 
I've lurked for a while on this subreddit and wanted to share one of my creepy encounter stories. I've been attacked unfortunately a few times living in London, but this was the first and scariest. I was 8 years old, visiting my grandparents who lived in London, at the time I didn't live here yet and was just visiting for summer. I was on a day outing with my parents and our visiting American friend, let's call her Laura. My dad grew up in London so wanted to take a sightseeing and we had done the Tower of London, Trafalgar Square and were wandering through Oxford Street area, window shopping. I remember trailing slightly behind my parents for just a moment and looking into a busy cafe as I walked, it had a counter bar where two large ladies were perched on pedestals eating ice cream. All of a sudden I remember watching these two ladies fall to the side on theater chairs onto the floor, in slow motion. It was like a dream sequence and I recall the music from the cafe sounding like it was underwater and slowed down momentarily. Except they didn't fall to the floor and actually it was me. All I remember next is a huge shooting pain in my back and Laura screaming over me whilst I watched my mum sprinting away through the busy forming crowd full of shocked faces looking at me with concern. My dad was on his phone and I remember being angry because mobile phones were new at the time and he was non-stop on his. I later found out he was calling the police not work. So what had actually happened whilst I thought these fat ladies were falling off their chairs, was a homeless man in a heavy coat had come out of the crowd, picked me up by the coat collar and slammed my body down into the pavement. My mom had immediately ran after him, chasing him down a busy London street until he pulled a huge knife on her and somehow she and three men nearby managed to disarm and hold him until the police arrived, which was apparently around two minutes, at the time I literally had absolutely no recollection of being attacked. I was excited to ride in an ambulance and a police car and go to the station. I asked to see a cell and remember getting given a pen by a police officer. I remember being in a bit of pain but couldn't understand the fuss over me by the paramedic. Boy, did the pain hurt later on. I must have had some sort of adrenaline going on where I was in shock and feeling nothing. It's amazing how a child's mind works when in protection mode. As a side note apparently I did wake up screaming for months every night after saying this man was in my room according to my mom. I only remember it happening once. I in fact had a cracked rib and had giant black bruises all over my chest and back from the attack, by the impact of the floor and his grip. Later in life I can remember his face quite clearly and I remember how high he picked me up to throw me down. This memory was triggered by receiving the birthday bumps as a teen and it all came rushing back in the most bizarre way, anyway, to explain my title. This man had in fact been using that large knife for a long time to murder people at night and had attacked a few other little girls in public, but had gotten away. The police had been looking for him for months and it just so happened, this dude didn't count for my, slightly insane, but fearless mama. So yeah there it is, he was put away that day and I had to go to therapy for a few years to figure out what went on. Convicted murderer had trouble paying at my cash register, this happened almost 3 years ago when I, 24F, was 21 years old and working as a cashier while in college. Also, I apologize for any spelling mistakes or grammatical errors as I live in a Scandinavian country and English is not my native language, it was an ordinary Thursday and I was in the middle of a shift working at one of the bigger supermarkets in my hometown. The store where I worked is located in the very center of the city. So you will meet a lot of strange people. I have a lot of stories from working there, everything from getting stalked to having things thrown at me. This story though is the one that I remember the most, I was focused of helping a customer when I heard a sound further back in the line. A man, 25-30M, had dropped all of his items on the floor and was struggling to pick up all the small pieces. He only brought one bag of candy and had opened the package. He was obviously on drugs and had trouble standing up straight and controlling his movements. The customers around him looked a bit uncomfortable, but I was used to it by now, the man eventually managed to pick up most of his things and made it to the front of the line where I scanned his item and told him what he owed. He was a bit out of it and it took a while for him to understand what I had said, and even longer to find his wallet. He first tried to pay with cash but didn't have enough so he tried to use his card instead. He pressed the wrong pin code twice and he was getting more and more aggressive and loud every time he didn't manage to pay. The cash register is really small so I was sitting really close to him, but I stood up to get as far away as possible. At this point I was willing to just give him the candy and let him go to avoid an altercation. I was scared now and just wanted him to go away. Luckily on his last try he managed to use the card and I was extremely relieved, as he walks away from the register I see three security guards walking towards him. Almost immediately when they approach him the man pulls out a knife and tries to stab the guards. 
customers were screaming and running away. Eventually the guards collectively managed to tackle him and he falls head first into the hard floor. During the fall his forehead gets really messed up and blood was pouring from his head onto the floor. He was now unconscious and the guards dragged him away to a room to wait for the police, and I think an ambulance, my boss asked me if I wanted to go home, but I said that I was okay and continued working. I can't deny that I was a bit shaken up though, the next day when I came to work the police was there. They told me that the man was convicted of manslaughter with a knife, he had spent 7 years in prison. And was now on parole, I'm still scared thinking of what could have happened if he wouldn't have managed to pay, or if I had said the wrong thing.